this is probably one of the rainiest late spring seasons that I can recall in many years. Let's take that radar all the way back to Saturday and see what happened over the past few days. This is Saturday, June 5th, and you can see right around max heating, most of the storms fl flaring up ahead of that trough moving out of Mexico. However, things are not quite over as it moves northeastward. We go through Sunday, another round of rain. And then we get this overnight stuff in Texas for Monday morning. That moves through, and here comes another area of thunderstorms this morning. And this is where we're at right now. It is slowly clearing out. Most of the stuff is moving into the Midwest and southeastern U.S. And we're starting to get into a slightly dry pattern. But let's take a look at how much rain has fallen. There you go. Many areas from San Antonio to Dallas up to Little Rock have received over 10 inches in the past 30 days. And we've got some isolated totals of 15, 20 inches, and even up to 25, which is about half of the annual rainfall. However, not everybody getting the rain. This is the precipitation anomaly. 100% is normal. Anything below 100%, the reds and oranges, those are going to be below normal. And then here we have the above normal. So pretty much the high plains, Colorado down to West Texas and Texas itself, especially the eastern part above normal. Some areas, northern Oklahoma and through Missouri, and of course, much of the Midwest running below normal. And of course, the southwestern U.S. just not getting a break. They're running about, looks like, 5 to 10 percent of their typical rainfall. That's not very good. Although, fortunately, this is a 30-day summary here. And stacking things up with the U.S. Drought Monitor. Drought from the Pecos River Valley, Trans-Pecos, and New Mexico westward back towards Oregon and Utah. And we're getting into the dry season here. So unfortunately, by August and September, we may be looking for widespread wildfires in the western U.S. And looks like things are not looking too good either up in the Dakotas. I think a good chart to start out with on this Tuesday afternoon is going to be the 200 millibar analysis. This is up at about 39,000 feet near the top of the tropopause or the troposphere. So this is going to be pretty high up there. Largest wave that we're seeing is on the west coast. We had a series of blocks out in Europe last week, but those have broken down and we're left with a pretty good vortex across the North Pole and a couple smaller vortices over Baffin Island and Greenland. So this is all part of the polar vortex and it's still cranking along there. And even that right there, that's a pretty uh, deep trough off the west coast. So this is more like a pattern we might see in April or May. Now what we watch for in June is ridging building into the southern U.S. So we would look for patterns like that to develop. But if we look down here, you're going to see that that's not really the case when we run the charts forward. And if anything, even though we have this ridging across the northern plains right there, we've got sort of a troughiness in the Gulf Coast area. See how we run that forward? There's an indication of a low right there off the Texas coast for the 10th. And there's the 11th and 12th, 13th, and just kind of a continuous troughiness right there on the Gulf Coast. So that's indicative of a rainy pattern in the southern U.S. And meanwhile, in the Rockies and Central Plains, looks like they're getting some of that ridging there. So that could keep them a little bit on the dry side and likely some hot weather also through this region as well. And as we get into the 14th, 15th, and 16th, not much change to the pattern. In fact, northwesterly flow in the Midwest and Great Lakes area. Did we start out with that? Let's see here. No, not really. They were just east of the ridge. The ridge passed through that area on the 10th. And there it goes. Yeah, there's some 
anticyclogenesis right there in the upper levels, 13th and 14th, and that's a pattern shift for the northern U.S., and that's likely to bring some cooler weather into that part of the country. It could dry out a little bit, but the influence out in this part of the country probably not as significant. And let's see, that's pretty much the story up into the 18th, 19th, and then the 20th, we start getting into a zonal pattern. And look at that vortex in the Greenland, northern Canada area. I think that's probably a little bit stronger than what we usually see in the summer. So we could see some continued polar air production up there in Canada. And the other side of the equation is precipitable water, which becomes very important this time of year, especially, you know, as we get into June and July, that moisture is critical. And the purples are going to be one and a half inch amounts. The lighter colors are two inch precipitable water amounts. And the cyan on the outside, that's going to be one inch amounts. And that's not a measure of how much precipitation there is, but that's how much would theoretically fall if we were able to squeeze the entire vertical column of moisture out of the atmosphere. So in a way, it's kind of a mean dew point through the troposphere. And that kind of eliminates the effects of shallow moisture in the lower levels. Even if you have 70s dew points through a very thin layer, that's not going to show up very well as precipitable water. So this is a very convenient chart to use. And it has an overprint of pressure. That's just standard sea level pressure. And a very important factor here is the distribution between low and high pressure. We can see in the Rockies, 1002, 1004. So that's very low. That's due to the very strong heating, the very hot weather in Utah, Colorado, Wyoming. And then the higher pressure, we look around the map and we find that in two areas. One is the Bermuda High, which is typically what we see this time of year. And the other area is the Polar High up to the north. And as we saw with the upper level heights running a little bit low in that area, we're still seeing quite a bit of polar air production in that region. So the effect between the two you're going to get a flow kind of like that into that low pressure area and coming up like that. And that puts the Midwest into a kind of a convergent area. So that's one of the things going on. This is kind of a wide band of lift. You get that mass convergence in the low levels. And due to the mass continuity equation, you have to have upward motion to compensate for that convergence. And that's the reason we're seeing quite a bit of rain out in that area. And you're going to see this pressure distribution change over the next few days, maybe into next week. Let's run this forward and see how things evolve. So the moisture is flowing into the eastern U.S. pretty well. And we're looking for changes in the pressure distribution here. So I'm going to take this all the way up to next weekend. So what do we see here? Well, not as much low pressure up in the northern and central Rockies right there. Most of the low pressure shifts into the southwestern U.S. right there. And let's see, highs. There's a little sliver of the Bermuda High over the Gulf of Mexico and Florida. And is that it? Yeah, there's a little bit of ridging through this area right here. So the effect that we get is a flow kind of like that kind of heading into Texas and Oklahoma, and that should keep the moisture locked into the state over the weekend there. And you can see that flowing into Oklahoma and Texas there. Get that upslope, and that's kind of basically your monsoon setting up in New Mexico. This is when they usually get it there. And then in July, it's usually Arizona that gets it at that point. And you can see dry air coming out of Canada. This is on the 14th of June. That's going to be associated with a cold front coming south and plenty of moisture down along the Gulf Coast. And there's a low right there. I don't know if that's a tropical low, but let's just keep going here. Looks like more rain. You see that noisy appearance kind of looks like the measles over Louisiana and Texas and Mississippi. That's convective elements there. 
So by, you know, just looking at the textures, that gives you even more information what's going on. You don't have to look at the reflectivity and precipitation charts. We know that there's plenty of precip right through this area here. And we run this up to the 17th and 18th. Looks like uh, a period of dry air in the eastern U.S. and very progressive front moving through. Look at that high driving in that cool, dry air, replacing this other dry air. And down to the south, it looks like the GFS setting up a tropical storm or maybe even a hurricane down there. SPC looking for a 20% chance of cyclone formation east of Nicaragua. So that certainly could be something coming up into the Yucatan region. And after that, yeah, this is kind of a cool pattern for late June. Lots of cold air advection coming into the northeast and midwest area. So it should be running cool in that area. And even down in Arizona, looks like they're getting some of that moisture coming in a little bit early. That's strange. Yeah, those are one inch precipitable water amounts. So maybe, hopefully, we're going to break the drought for a little while there in Arizona. Sort of an abnormal late spring here. Wow, 11 minutes in and we have not gotten to the surface map. So let's head right to it. It does look like a front has come through California. Some very cool temperatures this afternoon in the San Joaquin Valley, 74 at Fresno, 71 at Sacramento. Wow, almost the 60s. So that's certainly a polar air mass coming into that part of the country. Whereas out in southwestern U.S., 90s, that's not terribly hot, but it is certainly on the warm side. For the heat, we have to go out to South Dakota where it's 96, another hot day in that region. And the Canadian Maritimes, we had 95 out in Bathurst, New Brunswick, and we're seeing 90 degrees today. So they're not used to that kind of heat. For them, that's going to be a heat wave for sure. However, it looks like the pressure gradient finally bringing that front through that part of Canada. Elsewhere, Let's see, I forgot to draw the markings for that system that came through Arkansas and Louisiana. There it is right there. It's going to run something like that. That's being driven by a meso high, which appears to be centered on Arkansas. So there you go. And on the north and west side looks pretty warm. Lots of 80s and 90s. So this area here not very well affected by that MCS activity, but in the Mississippi River region, 70s, and quite a bit of rain. Let's take a look up in Canada. Remember last week we were seeing 90s in Saskatchewan. They've cooled down quite a bit, and if we go further north, look at that big high just bulldozing its way into the Canadian prairies, into Hudson Bay, and widespread 40s and 50s, or I should say widespread 40s and 30s in that part of Canada. In fact, the 50 degree line, that's going to run something like this. And then the 60 degree line, just very roughly, yeah, that goes all the way into Alberta and back into British Columbia. So this is a big mass of cool air. It's kind of doubtful this time of year that that's going to make it very far into the U.S., but pieces of it will get entrained in that progression of frontal systems down to the south. And we're going to see a bit of drying maybe in the northern states here and there. And eventually that will work its way into the circulations down south. But yeah, this is definitely a little bit abnormal. Typically this time of year, what we see is kind of a troughiness out in the Northwest Territories. The high pressure at the surface tends to stay up in Baffin Island and the northern high Arctic and in between, we get that southerly flow, bringing warm air up into Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Hudson Bay. Well, certainly nothing like that to today. So we do have, that's going to give us quite a bit to look at over the next week or so. And that's all we have for this edition of Forecast Lab. I want to thank our new supporters, Harvey Chevalu Jr., 
and James Rout. Welcome to the family and also Zachary Bennett. I think that might be an increased pledge. That is also very much appreciated. All right, hope you all stay dry. I guess if you're in the Southwest, that's probably not a compliment there. But either way, hope your weather is not too extreme where you are. Take care and we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.